what is going on in the world what is happening how about that red wave huh interesting friends we have an interesting show tonight and it involves our friends and neighbors to the west of us meaning our uh, our gun loving friends in Oregon and if you don't know what i'm talking about or have an idea what i might be talking about it is uh was it house major bill majors major 114 in Oregon so i don't know if you guys have noticed but we've been going through a midterm election that's been taking weeks okay we're just over a week nonetheless uh other less civilized countries with air quotes can count their millions of ballots in a day but i digress friends neighbors countrymen lend me your ear hopefully i can read through this bill without getting frustrated angry or whatever but i think it's important that you understand what's going on in oregon because it can easily be duplicated and produced and presented in any other state this is important all right, excuse my poor reading abilities, but I'm going to do my best, okay? Here's the preamble to uh, Major 114. Whereas the people of the state of Oregon have seen a sharp increase in gun sales, gun violence, and raised fear in Oregonians of armed intimidation, I don't know what they're implying there, it is imperative to enhance the, enhance the public health and safety, key phrase right there, in all communities, and whereas gun violence in Oregon and in the United States, resulting in horrific deaths, devastating injuries due to mass shootings, homicides, and suicides is unacceptable at any level, and the availability of firearms, including semi-automatic assault rifles and pistols with accompanying large-capacity ammunition magazines, pose a grave and immediate risk to the health and safety and well-being of the citizens of this state, particularly our youth. And, whereas, Oregon currently has no permit requirements for purchasing a semi-automatic assault firearm or any other type of weapon, a weapon, as studies have shown that permits to purchase reduce firearm-related injuries and deaths, and studies further have shown that firearm ownership or access to firearm triples the risk of suicide and doubles the risk of homicide when compared to someone who does not have access. Hmm. This measure will require that anyone purchasing a firearm must first complete a safety training course, successfully pass a full background check, and only then will an individual be granted the permit to purchase a firearm so that firearms are kept out of dangerous hands. And, whereas large capacity magazines are often associated with semi-automatic assault rifles and can also be used with many semi-automatic semi firearms, including shotguns and pistols. Pay attention to this wording, friends. And estimates suggest that nearly 40% of crime, of crime guns used in... In serious violent crimes, including attacks on law enforcement officers, are equipped with large capacity magazines. And, whereas firearms equipped with large capacity magazines increase casualties by allowing the shooter to continue firing for longer periods of time before reloading, thus explaining their use in all ten of the deadliest mass shootings since 2009, and in mass shooting events from 2009 to 2018, where the use of large capacity magazines caused twice as many deaths and 14 times as many injuries I don't know how they came up with that number including the 2015 shooting at Umpqua Community College in Roseburg, Oregon sorry, Roseburg, Oregon in which 10 people were killed and 7 more were injured and long-winded preamble and whereas Restrictions on high-capacity magazines during the 10-year federal ban from 1994 to 2004, and the ban in over nine states in the District of and in the District of Columbia, have been found to reduce the number of fatalities and injuries in shooting incidents. 
Uh, and this measure will enhance the safety of residents, particularly children in the state, by prohibiting the manufacture, sell, or transfer of large capacity ammunition magazines and regulate the use of such magazines that are currently owned. Now, therefore, be it the enhanced, by, be it enacted by the people of the state of Oregon. Okay, so this bill, it's uh, it's like 15 pages long. Let me double check here. I'm pretty sure it's oh, sorry, 12 pages. 12 pages, not quite as bad. I should know. I just read it all before, before I turned on the camera here. All right. I apologize for my terrible reading. Okay, I know, <laughs> I know that may sound a little bit saucy and and kind of poor Englishied. Yes, I know that. Not just don't judge me. All right. So, Oregon just passed this bill. Okay. Now, if you look at the popular vote, which the Democrats always oh we got to go to the popular vote. If we jump to the popular vote now at the midterms. The Republicans would have had that red wave. But suddenly the Democrats shut up about the popular vote and they're back fine with a representative vote, right? Odd. So the majority of Oregon... Uh, man, that door's squeaky, sorry. The majority of Oregon by area voted against this. But because the concentration of the people are in the major cities like uh, Eugene and you know whatever... All these other fancy... I don't live in Oregon. I don't know all the stupid cities. Sorry to my friends in Oregon if you feel offended that I don't know where you live. But the bill passed. All right? Nonetheless, the bill passed. So what was the point of this bill? If you paid attention during this preamble, you would have heard that the point of this bill is to reduce the ability of bad people to get firearms that commit gun crime. Now, if you have spent any time on the Unified Crime Report by the FBI, you would know that rifles of any kind are used far less than hammers, than knives, than feet and arms and fists, whatever. People, you need to pay attention to what's going on in Oregon. Now, I know that we had the Bruin decision. This may get... Uh, overturned in the Supreme Court, but that's a long time that our friends in Oregon will have to suffer through this. Now, there is so much more going on with this bill than what was read through the preamble. I read the whole bill, and I suggest you do the same. We're going to talk about some of these things that I found in some of these subsections that are ridiculous and disgusting, and it's because we've allowed these ridiculous, uneducated representatives free reign to do whatever they want, including ones with the R after their names that say, oh, i am got an A-plus rating with the NRA. I don't give a damn what your rating is with the NRA. I want to see results for you protecting the Constitution that you took an oath to do so. This episode might get a little fiery by me, so just heads up, heads up. First of all, Maybe you saw my face through some of the readings of the preamble here, if you're watching the video. They're not just talking about the AR-15, the assault rifle. Semi-automatic firearms, including rifles, handguns, and shotguns. Okay, this goes right with that wonderful bill that all the Democrats put up for the public safety. Okay? Okay. This is not, not just at the AR-15. This is just where it starts. Their plan is to remove anything semi-automatic and then baby step their way to just dissolving the Second Amendment altogether. Maybe I'm an alarmist, maybe I'm a conspiracy theorist, but their profile, their little pattern that they want to follow isn't just, you know, Oregon's following California and, and Illinois and all these other places. D.C., yeah, we're, those are super safe, right? There's no gun crime there. In fact, if you ask AOC, crime is down in New York City. Yeah, I mean, people get murdered in the subway, but <laughs> crime's down. Come on. This bill 
is taking away the rights of law-abiding citizens. You think the gang members are going to be like, oh, damn it, we just passed this bill. How am I supposed to get my get? No. Guns are getting stolen from people that don't lock them up, and this bill actually addresses safe storage. You're going to be liable, Oregonians, if your gun gets stolen and used in a crime. It's going to fall on you because you didn't store your gun right. This bill is a registry. This bill is a denial of rights. And it spits in the face of the United States Constitution. Read it. Maybe it's just me. Maybe my poor peanut brain has a hard time coming through on what these subsections talk about. But let's go through some of these, shall we? Wake up, people. Wake up. Let's look at section two here. Section two... Uh, let's see. It goes through a lot of definitions and stuff here. Let's see what page are we on. Page two. Uh, sorry. Oh, yeah. So part of this bill. So they're saying that in order to, to get or be able to purchase a firearm in the state of Oregon, you are going to have to get trained by law enforcement and signed off that way all the law enforcement all these agencies who are going to be communicating with each other at a state and federal level are going to have a record of who has the ability to purchase a firearm almost like a registry of people that buying guns right no that can't happen all right so let's see section two uh so the department shall develop the department under their definition is law enforcement law enforcement agencies of of the whatever agencies preside over the particular citizen they need to standardize the application process so here's this here's this law enforcement agency oh let's read through this first they need to standardize the application they need to develop a course then they got to do let's see oh they have to maintain a copy they have to do it in quadruplicate so they have four copies of this application. Why do they need four? <laughs> they have to retain it for five years. The agency does. Which, oddly enough, this expires every five years. So you have to... The, the agency has always got this information. Up-to-date information. Within five years okay, of issuance. Obviously, it's got to contain the name, address, physical description, phone number, blood type. Who else knows what's on there? It's got to retain all this information. Each governing law agency has this information available at their fingertips. Okay? Once it's issued, Oregonians have to present this, basically a FOID card like they have in Illinois, somewhat. They have to present this at the dealer. Here's the problem. At the end of December, gun dealers cannot sell a firearm if they, you know, the individual doesn't have a permit to purchase. But these permit to purchases are not going to be available for a very long time because all these agencies have to create this whole new bureaucracy to develop a curriculum, to find instructors, to come up with the funding to pay these instructors. A right regulated is a right denied. Okay? So what are these gun dealers are going to do? All these dealers in Oregon, what are they, they just going to sell well, shirts? They have to get rid of all their magazines. All the guns that come with regular standard capacity magazines, they got to do something with those magazines. Either they have to destroy them. I'm talking the FFLs. They either have to destroy them or they have to send them to a different state. They bought all these guns with these freaking standard capacity magazines, and now they are forced to get, to get rid of them, destroy them, turn them into the feds, or send them to another dealer in a different state. And then they got to procure new magazines that are compliant. Yeah, I'm sure they're just going to... This will all be free, right? No, it is going to destroy gun dealers in the state of Oregon. 
six months. Well, they they got to wait six months before they can sell a gun. I've worked in the industry. I know the margins on new guns. It's tight. How are they going to do this? How? Maybe that's all by design. It's so frustrating. Dude, it is so frustrating. All right. Sorry. I told you I get anxious. Quadruplicate. I can't believe that. They have to have four copies of this shit. All right. Another part of the subsection. Uh, the permit... The permit agent, meaning the law enforcement that issued the permit, shall report the issuance of a permit under this section to the department and shall provide the department a copy of the permit and any information necessary for the department to maintain an electronic searchable database of all permits used under this section. A permit agent revoking a permit shall report the revocation to the department at the time of notice of the revocation that has been sent to the permit holder. An electronic searchable database. No red flags there yet? Does that, that not make you nervous? Oregon. What have you been doing? What have you been doing? Honestly, the department shall maintain. Oh, yeah, I already read that, right? Ah. Uh, yeah. Or did I? Nope. The department shall remain, maintain an electronic database, ba <laughs> database described in paragraph A of this subsection by ensuring that new permits are added to the database, renewing permits assigned to, and a new expiration date, and expired or remoked permits are marked expired or revoked by them retaining oh my gosh so the database the searchable database will have all the information of every permit holder but wait there's more let's jump down to let's see no, there's just so much mumbo jumbo in this bill let's jump down to subsection nope same subsection Sorry. I'm telling you, this stuff just... Oh, this just makes me so angry. Let's see, subsection. Okay. So, we, like I mentioned earlier, there has to be a class, and the, the law enforcement agencies either have to train their own law enforcement agencies, or they have to train a private individual whom they feel like has the ability to teach this class okay oh and by the way it can exceed $65 so I mean at least you know Oregonians aren't gonna be paying too much for their issuance fee well, let's see where was I 8b proof of comp proof of completion of any law enforcement firearms training course or class that is offered to for security guards investigators reserve law enforcement officers or any law enforcement officers that in, uh, includes the components set forth in paragraph C. Okay. Why did I mark that one in? I don't think this is the same one I was looking at. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, no. Yeah, that's why. It's in section five. Uh, it was stinks because I got this on a PDF, so I couldn't highlight what I really wanted to talk about here. Okay. So, oh yeah, let's talk about this. This is a big, big deal. Okay. In-person demonstration. Okay, so part of the qualifications of this class, requirements of this class. Listen to this. Okay. Maybe, like I say, maybe I'm just conspiracy theorizing what's really going on but I think there's a lot more involved in this bill once they start enforcing it in-person demonstration of the applicant's ability to lock load unload fire and store a firearm before an instructor certifies certified by the law enforcement agency this requirement may be met separate separately from another course online course requirements whatever 
So you have to be able to, to show that you can safely use, load, unload, rack, and then safely store. This is all going to lead into the safe storage stuff that they had in New York City or New York State. I'm telling you. This is a Pandora's box. Okay? A Pandora's box. It is just ridiculous, my friends. Ridiculous. Oregon, honestly. What did you do? Or what didn't you do? And just because you don't live in Oregon, don't think that this isn't going to happen in your state. If you voted for the guy with the R or gal with the R behind their name because they had a high score from the NRA, you're stupid. You're stupid. The NRA, oh, yeah, we'll fight for this. They donated money after it was voted on. Seriously? The NRA doesn't give a damn. Other than they want to give you a cheap Chinese pocket knife if you give them a couple hundred bucks. That's all they care about. They are in debt to their eyeballs and legal fees. They don't give a damn about you. They don't. So don't... Stop voting that way. Stop being a simp. And open your damn eyes and see what's going on around you. Rant. All right. Section 6. This is another fun one here. Page 5. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is great radio, right? I, I know you love to see me squander and, and barely see what the hell's going on with my life here. Oh, It's not page 5. Section 2. Gosh, dang it. Sorry, guys. Um, is this what I wanted to talk about? 2A. Yes, it is. The purchaser shall present to the gun dealer. So when once you get your card, once you've passed the test, to for them to say, yeah, I guess you can have the ability. You've been a good kid. Go ahead and... and and purchase your gun. Once you present this, you filled out your 4473, and then you also have to fill out another little piece of literature for the state requirement. <sighs> and then you, the purchaser shall present to the gun dealer your identification that you've met the requirements of this section. And you have, they have to show your, you have to physically show them your card. The gun owner shall complete the transaction record, which they still have to develop, uh, obtain a signature of the purchaser of the re on the record. Then the, the gun dealer shall obtain thumbprints from the purchaser uh, on this particular transaction paper that they haven't created yet and attach it to the form, the 4473, which it doesn't say here, but I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen. Then the dealer has to call the state as well as contacting the, the NICS, right, the, the National Instant Check System. Then you got to call the state the state will then, you know, you'll, I don't know how, if it's online or what, but somehow the gun dealer gives them all this information on the 4473, which is the background check information anyways. So the, the state then, on this state record, there's the caliber, the type of firearm, the serial number, the make, and all the other stuff that's already around the 4473. The state retains these records for five years on an electronic searchable database. Okay? Now the state knows this is a registry. Okay? Hello? This is a registry. The state now knows that you bought a gun. Uh, you bought a Glock 19. Here's the serial number on this date. Here's your thumbprint proving that you bought it. Here's your unique verification number that has to be put on the state and I'm assuming at some point the federal paperwork showing that yeah you bought that gun and you were approved you got the you got the thumbs up attaboy from the state after you've already had the attaboy from the state because of the damn permit okay hello makes a lot of sense right 
Oh, yeah. So here's here's what's on there. Okay, so it's got the FFL from the dealer, the business of the dealer, the place, the address of the dealer, the name of the person making the transfer, so the employee at the dealership, okay, the FFL's employee, the make, model, caliber, manufacturer's number, which is the serial number, I'm assuming, of the firearm being transferred, the name and the date of the purchaser, which they should already know because they have the information on the card, the social security number, if the person has given it to the gun dealer. Um, let's see. And the type, issuer, and, and identification number of the identification presented by the purchaser. Hmm, I didn't really read that one before. The type, issuer, and identification number. So is there going to be only certain guns you can buy? It says no later on in the paperwork. But maybe they're talking like permit, light driver's license, and the permit to purchase. Maybe that's what that is. But here's the nice thing. After the gun dealer gets this unique transfer number from the state, the dealer only has to retain these, these records for five years. But under ATF law, it used to be 20 years, but now it's indefinitely that they have to retain them anyways. Almost like they'll always have a record of what was sold, transferred, in and out of the FFL's uh, dealership there. Pretty interesting. So apparently, I don't know if the state's doing another background check because they have to wait for the state to say, yeah, that person's fine. Go ahead and transfer the gun. It, there was a section that's going to be removed on here that if, if it was more than 24 hours, if they haven't heard back from the state, then they can transfer the gun. But nope, that's been struck out. It says you have to wait for your number from the state, no matter how long it takes before that gun can be transferred. Maybe you were a bad boy and you got a speeding ticket. And maybe that paperwork's just taking a little bit longer than it should. Sorry. Pretty interesting, huh, fellas and fellettes? Let's jump down to another one here just to just to boil your blood a little bit more. All right, seven. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, let's see. The department may retain the rec department, again, meaning the law enforcement agency, the department may retain a record of the information obtained during the request of the criminal history record check for no more than five years, except for the information provided by the dealer in the subsection 2, which, if you want to read more, just read the damn bill of this section, sufficient to reflect each firearm pur purchased by the permit holder, which must be attached to the electronic record of the permit stored by the department for only five years. The department may develop a system of removal of information. May. Okay, so a little bit of legislative wording here. There's a difference between may and shall when it's written down. Okay. May develop a system of removal for the information of in subsection if this section, upon proof of sale, transfers the firearm to another person or permit holder for uh, recording of the information to reflect the transfer ownership to the permit of the new owner. Okay? Meaning if I bought a gun, I didn't want it, and it talks about this later on in this bill, I can't just sell it to my buddy. No, I have to honor the permit. I can't just sell it. I have to call the state and say, hey, I want to sell this gun. They'll say, okay, go to a dealer, fill out the record, call us, we'll give you a number, you are not allowed to sell that gun until you get that number. But don't worry, we're only going to keep that information for five years. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Pretty nice of them. It's, it's pretty generous, I think, of them. Just only keep it for five years. Let's jump down a little bit farther down the bill. I know you guys haven't, haven't had a chance to hear me rant for a while, so this must feel really good. All right. On page 9, section 8, number 2. Prior to transferring... Okay, so this talks about gun shows, okay? So we all know about that. 
terribly easy gun show loophole for all of us to be able to sell guns whatever we want at a at a gun show because criminals always get their guns at gun shows because I mean FFLs they just give those guns away they don't want to take them back to the shop they just want to get rid of them well luckily they found a way to tie up that little loophole at gun shows this is important too okay and I already kind of referenced it subsection uh, let's see requires permits for all transfers at gun shows those pesky gun show loopholes um where was it sorry oh yeah section 8-2 Prior to transferring a firearm at a gun show, a transferer who is not a gun dealer, not a gun dealer, shall. Okay, we just talked about wording in in legalese. May and shall. Shall means you have to do it. May means, eh, it's up to you. A lot of stuff on the state is, eh, it's up to you. But on the citizens, it's, no, you're going to do it. Or... And we'll talk about penalties later on. A transfer who is not a gun dealer shall, and they struck out May, see, I'm telling you, shall by telephone verify that the transferee has a valid permit to purchase a firearm under Section 4 of this Act and request that the department conduct a criminal, criminal background check on the recipient upon providing the following information. But they already got a background check to get the damn permit. Now they got to file another background check on at the point of transfer. Now, before, if I wanted to sell a gun, which is completely legal in the state of Idaho, I can sell a gun to whoever I want. Unless I know they're a prohibited person. Okay? And I've talked about on the show how I normally do that. I ask for their concealed uh, permit. Then I know they passed a background check. But apparently... If you have a permit to purchase, which took you a background check and a class and at least $65 to get this card with your photo ID on it saying, yeah, I'm legal to purchase a gun, you still have to go through a background check by the state who issued the background check. That makes a lot of sense. Almost like they're trying to stall and keep people from buying guns. When I when let's just say me living in the state of Oregon and I'm at a gun show and I want to sell a gun to... Johnny Football Hero, because he really wants my 1911, I, the seller, am required to get their name, their address, their telephone number, the make, model, and caliber of the firearm, uh, and the serial number before, the, before I transfer it, okay? Then i got to have the name, the date of birth. This seems a little bit odd. These are protected things. The race, the sex, and the address of the recipient which is already on the card, which they've already done a background check on. But they need to do it again. The social security number, the address, where the transfer took place, the type uh, and the indication of the number of a current piece of identification bearing the photograph, so I'm guessing, again, driver's license or whatever else. And then, me, selling my gun to Johnny Football Hero, I have to call... The, the presiding law enforcement agency and let them know that I'm selling my gun I have to give them my name and probably my identification and then give them all this information that they already have of the person buying it plus the address of where we're transferring it or selling it then I gotta wait for my unique number from the state which could take who knows how long and if I transfer that gun to this dude because I'm sick of the giant bureaucracy, it's a misdemeanor. It's a Class C misdemeanor. Oh, sorry, Class A misdemeanor. Now, if I do it twice, suddenly it's a Class C felony. A right regulated is a right denied. Come on, people. Come on. All you other free states... People that live in Idaho, we, we enjoy the Second Amendment greatly, right? Boise is going to turn the way of Olympia and Salem and all these other places in the big city states. Big city states, boy, that's uneducated. 
all these nice little communities that we enjoyed, that we grew up in. Man, I, was, I wasn't born in Idaho, but I was raised in Idaho. And, yeah, we're a deep red state other than Haley, uh, Sun Valley, where all the snobs live, and the Boise Valley. Where's the highest population in the state of Idaho? The Boise Valley. Now, when we talk about representation, they're going to have a lot of people there to, to swing what should be a free state. Just like what's happening in Oregon, just like what happened in Washington, like what's going on in Arizona, California, Wyoming. I mean, Wyoming. Seriously, Wyoming. What the hell is wrong with you people? You need to clean your house. Different story, different show. What am I getting at with this long, drawn-out rage fest with this stupid bill? If it could happen in Oregon, it will happen other places. Now, I'm not going to talk about how I feel about the election, whether it's rigged or not rigged, if they've manipulated votes. Different conversation. Again, different show. What can we do to keep this bullshit from happening in our state? First of all, you need to get involved. I need to get involved. Nick is hearing this, and he knows exactly what my intentions are now. Don't worry. It's not violent. You need to get involved in your school board. You need to get involved in your city. You need to get involved in your state. If you want this in your little neck of the woods, then do what exactly what you've been doing, which is nothing but sending your money to the NRA, thinking that your A-plus rated 100% whatever representative in your state house has your back. There are some. I know in the state of Idaho we have some awesome people. We also have some that didn't get elected past the primary. People that were extremely pro-Second Amendment. But there's factions. Factions of the Republican Party that are breaking it down. That are calling people that are pro-A, these extremists. We're not extremists. We're patriots. Oh, that's a scary word now too, apparently. I want a two-party system. We need not argument, but we need conversation. Not one party is completely correct. I honestly feel, man, my daughter's walking around super loud up there. You're loud. I honestly feel, now I lost my train of thought. I don't know what I was going to say. Get involved. Hold your legislators accountable. Hold them accountable. Make sure your memory is long. I'm telling you. The stuff that's happening in Oregon, in California, in Washington, in D.C., in Illinois, it is coming to a state near you. It is coming. And if you don't believe that, just wait. The ATF has still yet to talk about their pistol rule. And now that they have control, oh boy, brace yourself. It's coming. Get involved. Get off your butt. This country was founded on principle, natural principles. The Constitution was written for you and for me and for everybody else. And when those principles are governed by God-fearing people, we have a free country. When those principles are abused by a God-forgetting, a God-hating legislative branch, we lose it. Again, there are people, I know there are people elected as representatives that are amazing. I get that. 
But for those one or two, there's ten more that are just terrible. And there's plenty that are pretending that they have your back that are going to throw you under the bus for their little bit of extra power. It's happening. It's happening. I would never call for violence. Again, I'm telling you, I've said it before, January 6th was stupid. What a waste. I think a lot of it was blown out of proportion. But a lot of those people were stupid. Violence isn't the answer. You know, I get in these stupid arguments on social media about people saying, oh, it's time to stand up and fight. Is it? Is it so you can be made an example of? I don't think that time's yet. The time is ready for you and me to make our voices heard. Our voices heard, not our rifles. The Constitution was written as a restraint on federal power. It does not grant you and me rights. It restricts the government's ability to impair our rights. Read it. Go beyond the Constitution. Read the Federalist Papers. Read John Locke. There's so or John Locke, I mean. There's so many other there's so much more out there. Arm yourself with, with knowledge. That's the firepower we should be using is knowledge. The information's out there. This bullshit about the the 94 uh, assault weapons ban, it didn't reduce crime. They manipulate the information to make you think that that it reduced crime. This bullshit about magazine capacity slowing down a shooter, he'll just carry more magazines. Come on. Come on. My daughter can change a magazine in AR faster than what these people think. They're stupid. You can tell that they're uneducated idiots writing these bills. Okay, I shouldn't say uneducated. They have a degree of political science, I'm sure. Wake up. Wake up. Are you done? Should I be done with his rant? I probably should be. I probably should be. I probably should be. Otherwise, I'm, I'm going to have an aneurysm. Let's talk about me for a second because, well, I'm on the show and you're listening. I, I know shows have been a little bit more sporadic. Now, you're probably wondering where Nick is, and I promise you he is still part of the show. In fact, we had a conversation the other day. Um, it's, it's just been crazy. It's just been crazy. He is still part of the show. He is not kicked out. And we will have more content with him. I promise you. I promise you. And it's probably more fun with him on here anyways. So that way you don't have to hear my sultry voice as often. Uh, but I don't know what's going on with me physically. Like, I've been really, really tired. I haven't been able to bring shows out as often as I want to. I've just been really exhausted. Hopefully it's just the time of year, but I'm, I'm kind of worried that it's, it's something else. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But I, I'm not going to stop preaching (laughs) I'm not going to stop trying to help you guys see what's going on around you I want you guys to be good stewards of the second amendment that is the whole premise of this show is for you guys to understand how important the second amendment is to the free country that we live in it is not about hunting it is not about uh, well whatever it is about fighting against tyranny look in history Look at what happened to those countries that disarm, disarmed their citizenry. It's not difficult math to come follow through on. It's pretty easy to see what happens. Make firearm ownership normal again. There are millions of firearm owners in the United States. Millions. My computer just turned off, so my light just got weird. There are millions of us out there. Doctors, lawyers, concrete workers, blue collar, white collar. 
millionaires. Millions. Millions of firearms owners. There is somewhere between 20 and honestly, I think it's closer to 80 million AR-15s out there in the United States. If that gun was the issue, I guarantee we would know. It's because legal gun owners like you and me and thousands and millions of others know how to handle and respect a firearm. We need to be sharing that knowledge. We need to be contributing to the to the what's the word I'm looking for? promulgation the growth of the second amendment there are new gun owners coming in by the millions well maybe not millions but a lot millions of background checks being done millions Oregon says with all these new background checks it's a raise in violence I'm guessing it has something more to do with uh, with letting criminals go. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. But as the rise of darkness and evil come up, so does the light. We need to be the light. We need to be sharing our knowledge, our passion, our love for the Second Amendment and the Constitution altogether with those around us. You know, where I live in eastern Idaho, we've got a ton of people moving in from California and Texas. Man, Texas. So many Texas license plates. I don't understand why they're coming up here maybe this winter. Because it's, I mean, it was like 17 degrees this morning. So that might change their minds. But as these new people are coming in, some of them just want to get away from the crazy. Maybe some of them are trying to convert to the crazy, more people. We have an opportunity. Man, almost, the term to my my mind is proselyting. (laughs) That's way too fanatical sounding. We have an opportunity to teach and share, to help these people understand why we love the Second Amendment, why we like to shoot, I can't tell you how many times I get asked, did you go hunting this year? I don't hunt. And then I get this look. You don't, you're don't. you a gun guy. You don't hunt? No, I don't hunt. Why do you have guns? Because I enjoy them. I enjoy the smell, the mechanics, the every part of the firearm. I just, I love guns. I'm passionate about it. Just because I don't hunt doesn't make me any less of a gun owner. Because again, I don't think the Second Amendment has anything to do about hunting. Other than firearms ownership, I guess. Honestly, do you know why why I don't hunt? Do you guys really want to know why I don't go hunting? It has nothing to do. I was not ever traumatized by Bambi as a kid. It's because I know if I go hunting, I will enjoy it way too much. And I would be spending money I don't have on new gear, on the best stuff, getting out there, wasting all this time that I don't have, uh, going out and trumpsing through the woods and probably not finding anything. It has nothing to do with me being anti-killing Bambi. It has everything to do with uh, my my addictive personality and going all in. I, I can't afford to do it. So I don't. I support hunting I think it's a a great use of resources and it does help the population of the wild game you might not agree with me I don't care be the steward of the second amendment that you want your new neighbors to be take them shooting why do you think I always say that at the end of each show take them shooting I know ammo is expensive I know fuel is outrageously expensive Take them to a range. Take them just out. Show them your parts of your gun collection. I wouldn't be too too excited to show them like everything. Take them shooting an AR-15. Now that scary black gun that, according to the left, kills millions of millions of people a day. 
Side note, I know you've heard this before. Guns save more lives than take in a day. Look it up. Friends, thanks for hanging out with me for my rant. The reason I'm so passionate about this is because I know we are going to be in an uphill battle for at least two years. A major uphill battle. We can't sit idle anymore. We must be heard. We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, we the people. The government works for you and for me. They are not our kings, our magistrates, or any kind of ruler. They are employees. And when an employee becomes becomes unteachable, they get fired. You have that power to fire people. But the government doesn't want you to know that. Both parties, both parties, are now the problem. I, I honestly think that. Do you think it's just Democrats that manipulate elections? Pfft, no. That's why nothing gets done about it. Because both parties benefit from it. It's time to clean house. Fire them all. Start all over again. This is not a call to violence. But it is a call to action. And it starts with your city, with your state, with your county elections. Run for office. If there's nobody there to fill that void that you think needs to be filled, run for office. There'll be more to come on that. Anyway, friends, be safe, be good stewards of the Second Amendment, and take somebody shooting. Good night. Thanks for your time.